Okay, hi, Svetlana Zalishuk from Ukraine, um, here at uh, Personal Democracy Forum, Poland and Central and Eastern Europe. Um, thank you, you came all the way from uh, Ukraine to be here, even though the, uh, of the events that are going on in your country right now are very tense. Um, so we appreciate your time. Can you tell me a little bit about you know, who you are and how you came to be involved in, in uh, the citizen movement in, in Ukraine? Well, yes, I'm a former journalist, although I believe you can't be a former journalist, so you are a journalist. Also, I had an experience to work in the government, and after that, I decided that I have to establish our own NGO civil society organization and move forward in that capacity. Why? Because in Ukraine, as a transition democracy, I didn't really see that there is a, this political will from the top. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how you usually do changes in the countries. So we decided with a small group, with a small team of mine, that we would like to uh, build this political will uh, using the bottom-up approach. So that's how we decided that we need a real and serious and influential civic movement, so civic associations, uh, public associations that would create this public demand. That's what we needed. This is how we started uh, with our NGO and established number of very influential and powerful and numerous uh, civic initiatives in Ukraine. And that's Center UA? Center UA is NGO, and Center UA means Ukraine, mm -hmm. but also we say, we call it Center of United Actions. And this is the philosophy on which our organization is based on, because whatever we do, we don't do it ourselves, but we create a, a big circle of people who are the key players in that area, who are really the key actors uh, who want that or another change in the country. So be, we, be, uh, we build the coalitions, associations, roundtables that right. move and forward. And what did you use before, before the, the Maidan protests really blew up? What were the issues that you were working on and, and what methods were you using to mobilize people? Well, first of all, it's government transparency. We monitor uh, members of the parliaments, we monitor governments. We use a lot of advocacy to push, not just to say that, okay, we monitored this and this is bad, that or another people is involved in the corruption or that or another people violated human rights, but we also advocate for changes in, the, in that area. Using also very uh, efficiently it turned out to be a political dialogue. So whenever we see a, a real problem, some gap, we come to politicians and say, look, this is what we monitored and it doesn't have to be like this. Let's let's find a compromise of how to, or uh, the solution of how to change that. So it was very important. Also, we do a lot of advocacy campaigns by uh, promoting or lobbying, if you want, uh, a good legislation. Like our organization was um, the key organization to promote access to public information law and we campaigned for that during two years we united hundreds of most prominent journalists around that particular legislation mm -hmm. and uh, uh, hundreds of NGOs all over the country and mm -hmm. finally despite the very reluctant position of the government they mm -hmm. finally adopted it and uh, it was quite a progress uh, uh, even from the point of view that despite the fact that the government was and parliament was uh, you know authoritarian basically mm -hmm. but when you have this real public demand and when government sees that uh, you can't ignore it anymore because it's a movement that you have to address right. and you have to answer they they make some compromise this is how we achieve that as well mm -hmm. we use a lot of new media so, mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, so uh, how did you so when the, the the Maidan protests began that it was over the issue of the Yanukovych deciding that instead of uh, moving towards uh, greater particip yeah. participation in the European Union uh, to pull out of that. Now, your organization was involved in these protests right from the beginning. Why did you, why did you get involved in those? What, you know, how did it connect to the issues that you were already working on? Well, first of all, I have to say that it's not even about our organization. It's about, it's much more, um, uh, how would I say it, uh, substantial. European integration was for the whole nation a choice of its identity. Mm -hmm. Let me remind you that Ukraine is only 24, 20, what, 23 years old. Mm -hmm. We are quite young country. Mm -hmm. But 
and uh, still until the very moment of your Maidan we didn't we was like a swing country mm -hmm. you know we were we didn't could we couldn't uh, I de uh, decide so do we go to the east or to the west or what do we build Eurasian Union or European Union together with uh, with other players so what do we choose to be authoritarian or go to be more pro democratic mm -hmm. what kind of what, what are the mission of our country what do we do in our region what what is what is our role this post soviet legacy you know uh, we didn't quite grew to the point that we decided, okay, this is our destiny, this is how we develop. So European identity at some point became this strategic course, this light in the end of the channel, that mm -hmm. this is our role and this is mm -hmm. our mission and this is how the whole nation may become more uh, prosperous and uh, yeah, to, to become uh, part of the civilization, uh, civilized right. world. Right. So. There was no choice for our organization. Right. We was part of it as an NGO, as a just citizen, as a journalist. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do anything else than join this and coordinate this and and uh, involve, in, put all your efforts in this particular movement. Mm. Because, you know, it's interesting that uh, in Ukraine we had hundreds of thousands of people who went into the streets. Yeah. And I think that it was the biggest ever European uprising that Europe never seen before mm -hmm. so uh, the European idea was much stronger uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, embodied or expressed by right. Europe by Ukrainians than by any European country since I don't know uh, during the whole century so in, in the second part of our interview I want to ask you a bit about the role of technology and and the internet in the protest movement but one last question and then we'll break um, there are claims in some of the American media um, that your organization, uh, in particular, because of some funding you got from uh, Americans, that uh, this whole thing is, that you're like a puppet of uh, US foreign policy. How do you respond to that? Well, I think it's a piece of non-quality journalism. Whoever wrote this article, I never got any email or calls or address on my Facebook that look guys we are writing an article with you and we have some information that is doubtful or mm -hmm. uh, we have some suspicion so can you respond to that can you show us some documentation or whatever mm -hmm. and I didn't get that and I would be happy to answer because our organization acknowledged to be one of the most transparent uh, uh, civil society organization in Ukraine because we go through any possible uh, and impossible international audits uh, of finance and also right program audits and they are all on our site and we are very transparent with our budgets on site mm -hmm. so and we are proud of that because we also show uh, leadership and I would say an example to other NGOs right. in Ukraine uh, so for and let me tell you that uh, we as a services as an NGO we were persecuted and pressured from the previous government for example they opened a criminal case against us and mm -hmm. they also hacked our emails and they will listen to our telephone conversation and for example uh, they uh, published my my private conversations and uh, mm. things about my private life on site so I get used to this you know this different kind of black PR or this yeah. uh, things and this particular case just showed me that uh, if you're a real journalist you have to check and then Right. A short announcement.